Hey, welcome back to your favorite intermediate algebra class. Good to see you today. We're going to talk about solving linear equations. That's one of our goals or objectives here is to solve linear equations. And then we're going to use those linear equations to do some applications of real life uh, problems in class here. So let's talk about some transformations. First of all, you have these properties of equality, okay, that apply to these equations. So if you have uh, A equaling B, right, if A equals B, if I add, let's say our C amount is uh, 3 to one side, i got to add it to the other side, right, to keep this uh, equation weighted the same on each side, if you will. That's called the addition property of equality. And we use these properties of equality to solve and manipulate equations. we got the subtraction property of equality. It just says if I have A equals B and I subtract 2 from one side, i got to subtract 2 from the other side, right? Multiplication property of equality similarly and the division property similarly, except using those other operations. So let's go ahead and apply that to solving an equation with a variable on one side. So if you recall solving these things, if 5x minus 14 equals 21, I have my variable on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and keep the variable on the left-hand side, and we'll push the number... <clears throat> that number, that minus 14 to the other side, so we'll gather all our numbers on the other side. Well, let's do the opposite of this minus 14, so we go ahead and we add the 14, so I'm going to use the addition property of equality. If I add it to one side, i got to add it to the other side, so again, I'm using the addition property of equality, and it looks like I get 35 there, so i got 5x equals 35, and I want to get rid of the 5. Well, right now, it's 5 times x, so what's the other opposite operation of operation, or how do you undo, I'm sorry, how do you undo multiplication? Well, with division, right? I want a 1x. So what I do is I divide by that 5. I got to do it to both sides. I'm using the division property of equality, because what is 5 over 5? That's 1x. We don't need to write the x, but what we did is we got that x to be solo, didn't we? That's what we wanted. So x equals 7. And of course, you could plug it in. You can check that x equals 7 by just plugging that puppy in, right? I say, oh, 35 minus 14 is 21. 21 equals 21. Hey, what do you know? It actually worked. Let's do another one, but now we have a variable on both sides. <clears throat> so let's gather the variables to one side. So I'm going to take the, you see that minus x right there on the right-hand side? So I'm going to plus the x this side, which means i got to add it to its like term on the other side. So I'm using the addition property of equality. And now i got 2x plus 1x, 3x. So i got 3x plus 6 equals 21. And now I'm just solving an equation with a variable on one side. So I get rid of the 6. So I have plus 6 right now. Do the opposite. So I'll subtract 6 from both sides. So now i got 3x equals 21 minus 6, 15. So 3x equals 15, 3 times x. So i got to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division, to get rid of that. 3 over 3 is 1x. So x equals 5. That's how you solve an equation with a variable on both sides. You get all the like terms on uh, one side with the variable, right? Gather all the variables on one side, all the numbers on the other, and then finish it off with one of those properties. All right, let's use the distributive property now. Well, as you would, could imagine, you're going to distribute first, then we'll combine like terms. So let's see what we have here. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times 8 is a negative 24. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is a positive 6. Okay, now we're going to combine like terms. You notice I have a 2x there, 10x there, so I got 12x plus 6 on this right-hand side left hand side stays the same. Now I got variables on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and combine those uh, variables to one side. You notice I have a minus 3x. I kind of want my x's to be positive. So I'm going to take this one over to the right hand side. So I'm going to gather all my x's to the right hand side this time and get all my numbers on the other side. Okay. So this time I'm going to take my 6, my numbers, pure real numbers, if you will, to this left-hand side. So negative 30 equals 15x. Get rid of that 15 so I can isolate the x. And I got negative 2 equals x. So x equals negative 2. OK, 
Okay. All right, let's move on now to solving an equation with fractions. Everybody's favorite. Everybody loves fractions, right? Well, let's get the uh, x's again to the left-hand side. Let's subtract that one-half x. Subtract the one-half x. Okay. So now I like to write these things uh, horizontally. Two-thirds x minus one-half x. And then I got a minus one-half still equals seven-sixths. Okay. To kind of remind you that, oh, when I add and subtract fractions, adding and subtracting fractions, I got to get a common denominator. Well, the common denominator of this three and two is six, right? The least common multiple, if you will. So I got to get a common denominator. So I got to multiply this by two, which means I got, and I can't just introduce that, all right? If I do it to the bottom, I got to do it to the top. So I'm really multiplying two thirds by two over two. I'm multiplying it by one. Right, so I got four sixths x. Multiply numerators, multiply denominators. Well, over here I got a two, and I need it to be a six. So I got to multiply by three, top and bottom. So minus three sixths x. All right, still got this minus half equals seven sixths. Well, four sixths minus three sixths. All right, four minus three is one sixth x. All right. Add the one half, add the one half. So I got one sixth x equals seven sixths plus a half. Well, we got to get a common denominator of a six here. All right. So seven sixths plus three sixths, ten sixths. So one sixth x equals ten sixths. Now we got to get rid of that one sixth in front, right? Now what I want right here, I want it to be one x, right? So what do I need to multiply this by? Well, if I got a fraction there, just multiply that thing by the reciprocal, if you recall. And if you multiply it by one side, the multiplication property of equality says I have to multiply it by the other side because you notice you get six sixths x or one x, right? Over here, you got 60 over 6, which, of course, is 10. Okay. So hopefully, that's a good little reminder of your fractions. It's been a while for you. All right, let's finish this off with writing it using a linear equation. A waitress has a base salary of $3 per hour. So, base salary, 3 per hour, right? And makes approximately 15 per hour in tips. So it looks like in tips, 15 per hour, right? How many hours must you work to make $135? Let's let X be number of hours, okay? So the total, total income here, we want this to be $135, right? That's what we need to make. This waitress needs to make and he makes three bucks per hour, so she works like one hour, right? X be the number of hours. One hour would be three times one. Two hours, three times two, right? Just depending on how many hours. But she also makes tips. And how much in tips? Fifteen times the number of hours that she works, right? So really, we got 135 equals 18x. So we divide that by 18 135 over 18, and that's the number of hours uh, that she works, which ends up being 7.5, 7 7.5. So she needs to work 7.5 hours uh, to make $135. Okay, thanks. We'll see you guys in class.